In this lesson, we'll learn a quick and easy method for creating a grid of frames in our InDesign layout. All right, before we get started, I'd just like to let you know that Digital Tutors would like to say thank you to iStock Photo and the artists Alvarez, Stallman, Double P, Iconogenic, and Hammond Dovey for their images that were used in this series of lessons. You can access these same images and thousands of others by accessing your exclusive Digital Tutors iStock discount at the following site. Alright, so I'm working with the project file 02, zero 02 underscore begin here, if you want to follow along. And I've got a little bit of information already in here. I've got a couple of pages, and you'll, if you check out the pages panel here, you'll notice a couple of master pages as well. So the document I'm working on here is sort of a mock-up for an interactive magazine. And I want to introduce you to a new feature here in InDesign CS5. Now, if you are accustomed to working with frames, whether that be a graphics frame, or whether it be a text frame, uh, you'll know how often you work with those. Everything pretty much in InDesign deals with frames. So I'm going to show you a quick and easy way that we can draw a grid of frames here in our InDesign layout. So uh, I tell you what, let's come up here to our Table of Contents master page and double click on that. And we'll go ahead and zoom in here. And you can see that I've got a few graphics on the screen here already. So uh, now in previous versions of InDesign, the way we would have done this if we wanted to, say, draw a grid of six frames here right inside our guides here is we would have come over and just grabbed our rectangle tool maybe and drawn, the, drawn in one of these frames and then maybe copied it over and lined it up uh, with the other frames or with the guides here in our layout. Now uh, I have in mind to create sort of just a, a grid pattern here and fill them with a, uh, a color so that we can use them as a backing for our table of contents. Now there is this new feature in InDesign CS5 that's going to make this a lot quicker and a lot easier. Now uh, let me just go ahead and draw this in here. I'm just going to click and drag here and I'm going to draw one big frame that's about the same size as sort of the area that I want to fill with these six frames. Now all we need to do in order to draw this grid is simply before we release our mouse button is to use the right arrow key. I'm going to go ahead and hit that one time and you'll notice here that I've added an additional column to the grid that I'm drawing here. So right now I'm going to draw two rectangle shaped frames and, and you can see that they're column shaped. So I'm going to go ahead and draw one more here. I'll go ahead and hit that one more time. Now we can remove columns simply by hitting the left arrow key as we're drawing this shape but I actually want to go ahead and add that third column here. Now, I also want to add an additional row. So, uh, very similar, all we need to do in order to add additional rows here is to hit the up arrow key. And you can see here, I've added a couple of extra rows to our grid. Now, uh, I just want one row, or excuse me, two rows, so I want to go ahead and hit the down arrow key and we're going to remove that extra row here. Now, you'll probably notice here that based on the blue line preview we're getting, now we're going to have a gutter here, both a gutter that runs between the columns of our grid and between the rows. Now, I, I really don't want this gutter there for this particular grid that I'm drawing, so let me show you how to remove that gutter as we're drawing it here. I'm going to go ahead and hold down my control key, and let me go ahead and hit the left arrow key on my keyboard a few times. Notice that I'm decreasing the size of the gutter between columns. Now we can continue to hit that left arrow key until that gutter completely disappears and those objects are touching one another. Now, uh, to, in a very similar fashion, all we need to do in order to get rid of the gutter between the rows is again to hold the control key before we release the mouse button. And we're going to go ahead and hit the down arrow key. And it's going to start bringing those, or excuse me, bringing those rows rather together. Now if we ever wanted to add space back between those rows, all we need to do is hold down control and hit the up arrow and we can increase the size of that gutter. But again, I'm going to go ahead and decrease that here. I don't want those, those gutters to be there. I want these shapes to touch. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag this down to fill the margins of our document here. And I'm going to go ahead and release that. Now, let me come up here and just bump that opacity up to 100%. And you can see that what we've drawn here is a grid of six frames and they're filled with a black fill color. Now, uh, again, I'm just creating sort of a graphic that's going to go behind the table of contents entries that are going to be on the main page of the table of contents. And uh, let me go ahead and come in here, hold shift. I'm going to select a few of these shapes here. 
And I'll come over to my color panel and let's just drop the tint on those to about 90%. All right, great. So uh, just to finish this graphic off, let's go ahead and select all six of these shapes by holding down the Shift key and group those together with a Control G. And I'm just going to come up here to my Control Panel and hit this Effects button. And we're going to add a quick drop shadow to these shapes. Uh, let's go ahead and preview it here. I'm going to go ahead and set the distance to about zero. And we'll go ahead and input a value of a quarter inch for the size. And I think that's going to make it stand out nicely there. So we'll go ahead and hit OK on that. And we'll just jump into preview mode so we can take a look at that here. Yeah, that'll work nicely. So uh, now we've just taken a look at how we can draw a grid of rectangle shaped objects or frames here with our rectangle tool. Now the beautiful thing about this process is that it works with any one of our shape drawing tools. Now whether that be a rectangle ellipse or polygon tool here or whether it be maybe even one of the frame tools up above the rectangle ellipse or polygon frame tool. Now the polygon tool is going to work just a little bit differently here. Let me go ahead and show you what happens here as I draw my grid. I'm going to go ahead and just arrow out a few shapes here. And let's go ahead and hold shift to constrain those. Now, let's go ahead and say that we've got a five-sided polygon here. And we're drawing this grid, but let's say we change our mind and maybe we want this to be more of a triangle shape. We want to eliminate a couple sides of the polygons. We can do that while we're drawing our grid simply by holding down our spacebar key. Again, before we release our mouse button, holding our spacebar key and using our up and down arrows. Now, it's a little bit of a stretch here. You're pressing a lot of keys at the same time. But you can see here how we can, by pressing the down arrow key, we can remove sides from our polygons. And pressing the up key, we can add additional sides to the polygon shape. And again, we're going to go down to a triangle here. And let's go ahead and hold shift after we've set the polygon sides. And we'll just release that. And you can see here, we've got our grid of triangular shaped objects. Now, not only does this process, again, work with both the shape tools and the frame tools, it also works with our line segment tool up here, our path segment tool. Let's go ahead and just delete those here. We'll go ahead and grab that here. Let's say we want five vertical lines. I'm going to go ahead and drag one of these down and just hit my right arrow key a few times. Let's go ahead and hold shift. And again, we can control the spacing between these paths by holding down the control key and using that right arrow button. We'll add one more here and just release that. And you can see here uh, how useful really this workflow is for drawing a lot of shapes and lining them up in a formation of a grid here within our layout. Now, there's one last feature I want to show you that's very similar to what we've been doing here. Let me go ahead and delete those. And I'm just going to draw sort of a rectangle shape here. Just go ahead and draw a rectangular shaped object and bump that fill all the way up, or bump that transparency all the way up, rather. Now, we've shown you how to draw new objects using this workflow. Now, not only can we draw new objects, but we can also copy objects by alt-dragging them uh, with a very similar workflow. Let me go ahead and hold down the alt key and drag a copy of that object out. Now, I'm going to drag that out quite a ways because before I release my mouse button, I'm going to go ahead and hit my right arrow key. And you can see that we can add additional objects and create, again, our grid of shapes. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit my up arrow key. And you can see here, we've created another row. So a very similar workflow. Now, we cannot hold the control key to adjust the spacing between the rows and columns here. But uh, again, all we need to do right in order to do that is move our mouse around. You can see here, we can exactly position uh, the gutters where we want them to be. So maybe we want these shapes to all touch. We can just drag those in really closely here and release them right about there. And you can see here that we have copied an object into a grid using, uh, using this very same workflow. All right, so let me go ahead and delete those shapes here. I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to my document here. Let's go ahead and jump back to page two. And uh, in the next lesson, we're going to pick up where we leave off here. And we're going to discuss some strategies for placing multiple images into our layout.